Welcome to CAST, the originator of the UDL guidelines. Let's take a tour of the guidelines, the central tool of the UDL framework, to get a sense of how they're structured and how we can use them. The UDL guidelines are based on research from the learning sciences, cognitive psychology, and neuroscience. The idea is that by proactively focusing on removing barriers in the learning environment, we can improve how learners engage with content and show what they know. The guidelines are a tool for helping us know what to pay attention to when designing learning. So at the top here, you'll see the three core principles of the UDL guidelines. Provide multiple means of engagement, provide multiple means of representation, and provide multiple means of action and expression. These principles are directly related to three networks in the brain that are involved in learning. The first principle, provide multiple means of engagement, is based on our understanding of the affective networks of the brain, which govern emotion and orient us toward what matters. Since we all have different things that we find important, we want to design learning environments that have multiple means of engaging learners. And as we go down the column here, you can see that this starts with providing options for recruiting interest. Then we provide options for sustaining effort and persistence, and then promoting self-regulation. So if we've got a learner who's engaged and ready to learn, they're interested, then we want to make sure we're providing options and choice in how the content is shown or how the information is represented. This is multiple means of representation based on the recognition networks of the brain, which support us to take in information and make sense of it. As educators, we don't want to ruin their sense of engagement by presenting our content in ways that are difficult or even impossible to access. So again, going down the column, you'll see that to do this, we want to have options for how learners can perceive the information, like making sure they can customize displays or have both visual and audio versions, captions, alt text, things like that. Then we want to make sure there are options for language and symbols, that vocabulary and notation aren't getting in the way. And finally, we want to have options for comprehension, giving options for accessing background knowledge, visualizations, or big ideas, basically building on a solid foundation. Okay, so we've engaged learners. Uh, we've represented our content in multiple ways. Now we want to make sure we're providing multiple means of action and expression. That to the best of our ability, we are providing options and choices for how learners show us what they know. This principle is about making sure the strategic networks in the brain have a way to organize and act on our content. We can do that by providing options for physical action, meaning that every learner physically has a way to respond. Next, we want to provide options for expression and communication. Options for how learners can express themselves and let us know the skills and knowledge they've gained. Finally, we want to provide supports that help learners develop their own executive functioning capacity. So in the end, they can plan and organize their own learning. And that's really the ultimate goal of UDL. Through the application of the core principles, research tells us we can help learners become an expert of their own learning process, or as we call them at CAST, expert learners who are purposeful and motivated, resourceful and knowledgeable, and strategic and goal-directed. These guidelines aren't meant to be used as a checklist. You don't need to follow them in any particular order or implement all of them. Instead, the guidelines provide educators, all of us, a research-based way to analyze our teaching practice. Using the guidelines helps us think strategically about how we can remove barriers, increase access for all learners, and provide deeper ownership of learning. At CAST, we think the most amazing thing about the UDL guidelines is that they offer educators choice and clear advice on how to design their learning environments, learning experiences, and curricula.